Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of the Choke Bros. I'm your host, Sam Snipe Prime. I'm Zach Burrell. And I'm Cody Snodgrass. And before we get started, we do want to thank our card sponsor, CardsBeReleased.com. Check out Cards Release for your singles and all of your foils, which I just got in. What was it? 13 <laughs> pounds of foils. The, uh, wow. All right. Yeah. Wow. They, yeah. Mac, Max Williams collection has arrived. Oh. So. Wait. That's you... high value. Oh, boy. All right. That's intense. <laughs> That'll be the fourth topic we talk about today. Oh, uh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but first up, uh, we had the Arizona Petite Cup happen this last weekend. Uh, yeah, uh, I think the Earth Fire list is pretty sweet. You want to start there? Wait, Earth Fire. Hold on. Sorry, Wind Fire. My bad. Okay. Wind Fire, Wind you Fire. You talking about the, the, the red and green bell peppers? Yes, the bell peppers. Yeah, let's talk about that. Uh, we got Saz seeing play. I haven't seen Saz see play in quite a while, actually. So I do, love that forward that? Saz. Like, I think it was Opus 4 with the, like, Legend control deck that was Lightning and Fire that had all, like, the three Raid and three Bahamut, whatever. It also played Saz as, like, a finisher along with, like, Shadow and stuff to finish guys off. That was a sick deck. Uh, it's nice to see Saz sing play again. Uh, I, I just want to, like, say I hope that Okimoto lost to that deck. I hope <laughs> <laughs> Like, I'm looking at the list. I'm, like, trying to figure out what the places placements would have been, but... I mean, it had to beat either some variation of Earth, Wind, or Scions, so... Right, exactly, yeah. Unless it played against the Scions deck, then it could be, like, whatever, right? Because, like, <laughs> I mean, the Scion deck could just, like, stumble on backups. Like, sometimes the Scion deck just misses a backup, and then the, that little green-red pepper is going to chili its way on through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, other than that, looks... I'm not going to say standard, because the archetype's not standard, but whenever I've seen people build these wind, fire, kind of aggressive decks with uh, cards like Chalinka, Ranger, uh, Barbaricia, Moogle, Diablos, Phoenix, like, I've seen similar shells before. Uh, I do find it interesting they chose to play Black Waltz. How do you guys feel about that card? I've never been a huge fan. The Black Waltz 2? I think it's good. Yeah, I think yeah. it's fine. I've never liked yeah. playing it. Like, I don't mind having it as an experts, but, like, playing it to the field has never felt particularly great to me. Maybe I just haven't had enough times where i've played it and felt good and i don't know it's just one more way to like interrupt an aggressive deck so you can set up your yuris i think it seems good actually i guess that makes sense also how do we feel about the uh vv backup rather than the three drop vv in a phoenix deck uh the vv4 is probably not very good right now because it because of layla and viking you're just not getting your value out of it right so if they have like a waka then it's just out it's out gunned by a layla basically true and like the vb is just a free kill on either of those cards I guess that's yeah, a fair point I think, the, I think the vb and the black mate or the black waltz i'm sorry i think that's that's interesting i'm not a, i'm not actually a big fan of those cards but i would be surprised if the person that he lost against was the water player although i guess Vasoya seems good against this list um i mean that's what took first still, place right yeah but it doesn't mean this person was the person oh was. i see that wasn't second <clears throat> place this was third fourth okay correct they might have never even played true true uh, so they played either the data luma version from brian berkeley or uh brian huin 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 i'm gonna butcher that name i'm sorry uh on the monowar for soya yeah it was the battle of the brines in the finals here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for real you think it was this uh spicy red and green peppers deck that uh kept ice out of it you know like it was too hot for the ice to handle i mean maybe this goes too fast for those giant like six and seven and five forwards to handle i think zach missed it no, I, I got <laughs> it no, i got the joke i just glanced past it you know no one ever enjoys my puns so why should i acknowledge yours oh uh, <laughs> also we see uh vice kings it's because you're that's because your puns are nothing special mm. <laughs> uh but we also see vice kings coming back uh what do you guys think of that I'm looking at the summon line and I see a Hades. Now yeah. I'm all about trying to jam a Hades <laughs> into a deck, but I, I question that option. Yeah, it's the one card I was highlighting. I was looking at now. Uh, I like Hades, but I I can never make room for it in a deck. So it's possible that they didn't want to have like a card that they like too much to discard, so they just put a really <laughs> shitty card in there so that they could feel good about casting their Sephiroth on turn two. I mean, maybe. I mean, the card seems powerful, like kill your guy and discard. But oh, paying five for that with no ex and like you can pay three for that. You know, <laughs> like what do you in mean? In fact, he's got 
He's got three glossy lobuluses in his hand. Oh, okay. yeah, exactly right. It's basically the same thing. <laughs> uh, what do you guys think about uh, the standard unit time mage? Oh, that one's good. That one's really good. Oh, I love that yeah, time mage. Like... It's just a mini Genesis. Like, a lot of times, yeah. I feel like Genesis is great because of its, you know, back end where it gets to make you discard a card and it puts that pressure on players. And it's a 7K, so it's a little better. But a lot of times in these kind of aggressive, like, I'm not going to call them token decks because we don't have tokens, but, like, these little guys that just want to be really aggressive, uh, often it's, that dull and freeze is almost all you need. It's kind of a token deck. It's got the token black card. Wait, what? Oh, there's knee talk. Okay. Sam with <laughs> all the jokes this week. <laughs> Good God. <laughs> yes, it has knee talk. <laughs> I, I hadn't scrolled down all the way. I didn't even see the knee talk. All right, that's the most important part. Um. But yeah, I, I like the Time Mage. Uh, it's a Gladiator target. It's a Bron target. I mean, the deck's playing triple Devout, double Time Mage backup, triple Renoa. Like, it is trying to abuse the heck out of Sephiroth, enter the field abilities, Nidhogg enter the field, Cloud of Darkness. It's just reusing all these enter the field abilities over and over as much as possible. And I love, you were asking about the Time Mage. Uh, having Time Mage alongside Gladiator has been really sweet. Like, when I was playing uh, a version of JFB's uh, aggressive snow ice water deck, uh, we ended up taking out the black mage that like Moogles basically if you pay water to play it, uh, and with Gladiator had that time mage and that that was a bonkers combo all the time, especially with snow. I mean this deck's not playing snow because it's going a little higher cost than that, but um, I, I definitely like that combination of two cards. Yeah, absolutely, uh, and then outside of the Petite Cup in Arizona, we also had uh, Game Theory hosted the Keyblade Cup, the RVA Returners. I know they went up and played in that uh hunter nance obviously was there uh but it was won by william Lowe playing ice earth yeah so i actually haven't clicked on the ice earth yet okay that's uh that's familiar <laughs> <laughs> although they're not playing Ooh, wait never mind no it's not they're not playing the seven drop sephiroth see if i'm playing ice earth i'm all about that you know jesse searching sephiroth kind of curve early game like that seems pretty sweet and i don't see that here that's interesting Okay, so this is going to sort of tie into a topic later, but um, I see they have the six package with Locke and Setzer and all that. That's interesting. I guess you have Dataluma search off the Castellian Sid, right? Right. Yeah, I know that like, they want Chaos to like help improve the, the amount of times you can daddy ping with Terra, but like I feel like Galdez is just better than Camelot right now. The Emperor's fine. I know a lot of people hate it, but the Emperor's fine, like, in the metagame right now, mm -hmm. because it's actually pretty damn good against um, Wind Water. Like, if, if you right, can... Right, right. Like, by keeping their hand size low, it's, like, pretty good against Wind Water. You just don't block with it, you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. um, but I think this deck could use Galdas like, a lot more than any other card. Galdas just... is a... <sighs> card's insane. But, uh, locals have been picking up more and more and I know some people are playing two, almost three copies and it's just it just keeps coming down and it's really annoying. It Usually it yeah. can trade up with basically anything if it needs to. It can get stuff back. Worst case, it just dies on an empty board with no monster targets and you're like, alright, well I'll just, you know, make you discard a card. Like There's right. no bad end of that card. Like our, one of our locals just refuses to not play dark cards in Mono Water, and I just, I, Jacob, I've been telling him, like, all right, just then jam three Galdez. Like, yeah, if sure. there's ever a deck that wants Galdez, it's Mono Water. Like, a deck that needs time to set up. Mm hmm Interesting. I've never thought about Galdez in Mono Water, honestly. I yeah, no, he's been that. playing, like, Spiritus, Chaos, Camelot, Emperor, like, all these dark cards in Mono Water. And, uh, I mean, it, it gets He's you doing pretty well sometimes. with it, yeah. But, uh, I mean, it's, it's no Fusoya <laughs> or Yuri or something. But, yeah, something like Galdas could definitely up the power level in a deck like that that's just trying to churn out dark forwards. Also, I, I, I kind of want to know which which tournament. So, the Keyblade tournament had 31 players. The Arizona Petite Cup had 30 players. Yeah. So, yeah. they had one-third the amount of players we are. And I was thinking this before I even played it. I think if I wanted to win one of those... I think that the air, the petite cup. Looking at the lists, I think I would rather have played the petite cup. I think it would have been easier to win the petite cup. And that's what is an interesting thing, right? Than like the keyblade tournament. Mm -hmm. Like the keyblade tournament, I think they're playing like some pretty good decks. I don't love the decks that I'm seeing in the petite cup, but like 
If people are not playing against this wall deck, it's the real deal. <laughs> There's two copies of that mono fire wall deck in the top eight of this Keyblade Cup. And I mean, if you look at the people in this tournament, you got Adam Lane, Chris Adams, Hunter Nance. There's no slouches here. Like, you're not, yeah. it's not an easy. Yeah, and, and Bailey, who is our um, <clears throat> really new, she's my roommate and good friends with my wife and I, uh, very new to the game, less than a month on the game, was in first seed going into top cut with mono fire uh, mm -hmm. last weekend. This weekend, Serena played it. Went, went undefeated um i mean and that deck is, is really good and we have a strong locals like we've said before like again we're, yeah there are no slouches either and we get <laughs> bent over sometimes by that mono fire deck it just there's been turns where i've had hands where i have like a backup on turn one i take two damage on her turn one then she threatens me with like I, I know I saw her like search a card or something. I know she's got like Aegis into Soul next turn plus a Warrior of Light. I'm gonna go up to like six damage on turn two or three, and I have to play something to just not immediately die. Because then if she oh yeah, there was a then if she rips a, a Neo Muhammad, I'm dead. I think on like turn four, Jacob played Camelot, searched up. He already had a Chaos, searched up Shadow Lord, played Shadow Lord, killed three of her guys, and said this game is over. And then he died two turns later. So <laughs> it's like, yeah, you killed three of my guys, but I still, I still got this, um, this ghetto, and he's gonna still give all my guys haste. Yeah, ghetto is insane play. in those decks. Like your soul's just this casual two drop nine k. That's brave, right? Like, right. it's Sometimes terrifying. Hate. Yeah, yeah I'm, at, I'm looking at Adam Lane's list now. Uh, what do you guys think about Neo Bahamut in this list? That's uh, we're, Serena we're, plays. We're it. playing, we're playing three here. Yeah, Serena's playing three as well. This list almost looks exactly like Serena's. It's interesting because except the Phoenix, the big one, right? She's not playing. Big yeah, Phoenix. she's not playing the big Phoenix. So it's interesting that we've come to similar conclusions, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I don't think you guys are playing Marauder either. I think that's a bit of a liability with a lot of like Dotaluma and Yuri Chalinka oh, stuff yeah, running I, around. I, don't, I wouldn't touch Marauder for sure. Like the but third Furion, maybe looks... with the Phoenixes. Like I played third Furion, I think. Before. Yeah, everything else looks pretty pretty good. Femoral Fan yeah, is like interesting. This, I like this list a lot. I can respect the. Would you play like three Neath instead of one? Yeah, or two. I I think. Two or three, but I, I would lean towards three. I would never cards play one meat. It's the best fire card. Yeah, it, the card's insane. <laughs> it's like very easily the best fire card. Yeah, he has he has six targets for the four drop phoenix. Also, that's nice. That's awesome. Yeah, no, this deck is sweet for sure. And it looks like uh, the one in last place from uh, what was it Danny Scott? Yeah, Danny Scott. He's got a couple different card choices. He has three Lednar, which I've seen some people try for these lists. Yeah, Bailey was running Lednar. She liked it quite a bit. He's also has Eject, which I don't think I've seen in many other lists. I, I actually did Adam Lane have Eject on the top end? No, or? no, no, no. We're we're playing Eject in the EX burst lists right now, but but not in this, not in modifier. And yeah, this one doesn't have the 10k EX Bahamut, but it has the 8k, uh, you know, deal eight. Or deal eight K. Well, that's because this one's running Vermilion, uh, Vermilion, uh, sure, Katuna, sure. So, <clears throat> yeah, this is cool though. I like again though. I if if I'm playing in the two tournaments, man, I would take the Arizona Petite <laughs> Cup. Like, yeah. I th not that those are slouch decks or slouch players, obviously, but just I feel like those matchups are just way easier to navigate. Like, if you play against Mono Water or you play against like um, uh, JFB's deck or or even um. Scions like those decks are very easy to navigate against. I feel like, mm -hmm. whereas like, what well, maybe the exception of Vice Kings, uh, not because it's not easy to navigate, but it's just hard to predict. Right, like you they don't know if you're gonna get, you don't know if you're gonna get Sephiroth, or or if you overcommit to the board to not get Sephiroth, and then you just instead get Genesis, and you never untap with your guy again. Um, or they have like a double Nidhog turn where they go Nidhog Devout Renoa, and you're just blown yeah. out. Yeah. Also, uh, Hunter Nance representing the uh, chicken deck, <laughs> the uh, Ice Wind Snowbirds. Choke yeah, it's, it says filthy net decker, so I, without looking, I'd have to assume that it's fifty for fifty the deck that won. But yeah, I, mean, I, I don't, I don't cool have to see the that do more. Cool. Yeah, I could look at it and tell you, but I, my guess is also that it's close for sure. Like it's got the triple snow, two fat chocobo. I remember that split, three eyes on it, three Adele. Which I guess he likes to win games. <laughs> Yeah, winning games is good. And then uh, shout out it is, to... I think it is the exact same list. By the way, if you, I th maybe I'm crazy, but if you put No-No in this deck, it's just so insane what you can do between No-No and Sarah. Oh, yeah. Like just untapping your 13 backups oh, and just extra freezing. Like I was playing this deck, and I know Sid Hayes is nuts, but I was playing two uh, No-Nos over the two Sid Hayes, and I would not That's take that back. That's actually pretty it. insane. I didn't think about that. Yeah, because you just need to activate your Snow and your Jill or something and just 
freeze. Or your mom, yeah. Both, both freeze, both, both freeze. Yeah, and yep. then uh, the <laughs> shout-out to Legendary Wolf Games, Miles Tyler, and uh, Shane. You guys got your list in this tournament, too. The uh, Mono Earth, Cockatrice, EX Burst blowout deck <laughs> with the uh, six backups of being Rob on and and the rest is just like all the Vanille, Yang Ursula combo, Vanille that uh, free plays a four drop, the Vincent and Yuffie, like all these two card like play for free combos, Gipple to push through damage, bunch of EX Burst to spin the wheel to victory. This yeah, this deck, deck seems uh, dope. It's played at Locals too. Ian played it, right? I think he yeah, played. It was the, like, one of the days I couldn't make it. For sure. Yeah, this deck's sweet. Yeah, that's awesome. It's so that punishing. Piloted, that was piloted by Chris Adams, right? Yep. Chris Adams, yep. He uh, just missed top four with it. So he... One of those decks he would have lost. I'm not sure which one I think would be a good I'm so proud player. of those young men. So proud. <laughs> they, brought all, they, they brought all the good decks that were all like, yeah, we think these decks are nuts, but we just don't have the balls to do it. Right, for sure. Like, all these decks are reasonable things that you'd expect to do well. Just there's very di they're just very diverse. There's not, like, two copies of the same one except for the wall deck. No, yeah, I think I think we've tested and played all of these decks. Yes, we have, actually. And liked them all, but then we're like, yeah, we just don't have the balls, though. So I'm like, I like my uh, Dottaluma Cactor and my other weird <laughs> nonsense. Yeah, this is sweet. I like these lists. Yeah, and I'm back to playing Tempo Ice, so I... I'm not. I'm not. I'm not risking anything anymore. <laughs> <laughs> not going uh, mono lightning YOLO at a uh, cup. Gosh, no. <laughs> no, I just got on the Galdas train, so I'm. I'm sticking with that. Oh, you're doing Galdas bit. instead of Yuri in mono ice. Yeah. Interesting. How do you, Sam? Which one would you go? Which direction? If you're playing a mono ice deck. Galdas for sure. Galdas over Yuri. Like, well, Yuri's kind of kind of a deck card that like if you untap with it you're going to take over the game um but ice kind of already has that like event it has that eventuality where like you just get in a board position where you're going to win and galdas stops your opponent from stopping you from doing that like traditionally ice right. has been weak to like do you think it'd be good against like very aggressive decks but the newer versions like without like shiva like the the four uh opus four shiva they can actually get punished really hard and like a lot of them are playing like only two genesis instead of three um, because it's not as good since the, the meta has slowed down quite a bit. So you could actually just get punished by like this mono fire deck, for example. And I think Gaudas is like an excellent call. That's fair point. Yeah. No, I like that. I, I just love the kind of security that I feel when I play Yuri, where I know like if you have five backups, you can just pitch two cards, play Yuri, and you know, you have two activations up and the game feels very in your favor. Like no matter, almost no matter what the board state looks like. Uh, but I could definitely see the argument for Gaudas. Yeah, I, I've definitely played both, and not at the same time, obviously, but uh, two different versions of Mono Ice. Uh, but I think I like Galdez to stop like the early aggro, like That's fair. like you know, stuff like like the Mono Fire deck, like Sam was saying. Yeah, no, uh, Galdez is super good against the uh, Mono Fire deck because if you if they ever have Aegis and Soul out, they can't attack with Aegis ever because you just block and then you neg five Soul and then they both die, unless they have other stuff out. Right, right. But uh, speaking, that, wait, what's that? Oh, go ahead. No, you're good. You're good. I was gonna pass it over to you. I was gonna say, speaking of cards that I can't get away from, uh, I wanted to pick your guys' brain about uh, something I've been thinking about, which is sacred cows. So, for anybody that doesn't know what a sacred cow is, like my friend Cody here, uh, <laughs> a sacred cow is something you either can't get away from or you refuse to not. Like, it, well, in card game sense, you refuse to not play a card in a certain archetype, uh, or you you think well, you, like a certain archetype. Or, or like, yeah, or like Cody archetype. just Cody just yeah. ices a sacred cow. Yeah, that too. And you fee you overvalue it because you have some sort of internal bias or something. So some things I've noticed lately, uh, like we talked about our buddy at locals playing, refusing to get off of dark cards, even if it might be better to play a light card. Or uh, whenever I play an earth wind deck, uh, regardless of what people tell me, any any wind deck period actually mono wind wind earth wind water whatever i have to have multiple copies of archer because i just i feel like i never want to not have that card uh just in case someone plays minwu or i can blow somebody out with a pump or something uh, are there anything are there any cards you guys have noticed <laughs> recently that people are way overvaluing like maybe i've heard some people talk about the layla viking package for example um I'm trying to think I'm, i was thinking of my own examples uh that cards that i overvalue um, I'm trying to think. So maybe like the two drop Lulu backup. I know it sounds weird, but like the mono fire one, hmm. I really don't like that card. 
but I feel like every mono fire deck is putting that in there. The one that deals 7k. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'd, maybe that's just me. I just, I'd never put it in any of my mono fire list. Um, but I don't know what your guys' thoughts are on that. Adam, Adam Lane didn't play it, and uh, Danny Scott didn't play it either in their mono fire. I almost okay. like that card just to make Meath better. Like, you can play Meath more than once. <laughs> but outside of that, yeah, I could see, I could see that being a thing. We, we had a local How play. How do you even lose a game? Too. How do you lose a game whenever you, like, play Meath? <laughs> <laughs> I can find any card in my deck, basically. No, we had a local that was doing a cool water fire thing where he had Yagarosh and Lulu. So he would Yagarosh, bounce Lulu, play Lulu, break his Yagarosh, kill something, play Yagarosh, bounce Lulu, play Lulu, break. Like, he does this whole loop thing. It's kind of fun. Holy shit, I just realized... You could play the two cards that you can't lose once you cast in the same deck, and one of them gets the other one. You can play a Neath in an Alua deck, and just never <laughs> and never lose the game based off no skill whatsoever. You just you just you always have the special, you know, no worries, good job, you deserve it. <laughs> oh man! So wait, are there any that you can think of though, Sam? Especially. You sacred being cows. My, I mean, you being no, my we've friend. Got, we've got. A, we've got. A, I mean, can I think of things that you think are sacred cows? I can, but like the majority of players have gone really away from them. You know, people would think that you're an idiot a long time ago if you would play less than three fasoys in the water deck, or if you played any fasoys in the water deck, they would think you're an idiot if you didn't play Alcid. Then they got to a point where they're an idiot if you did play Alcid. Those types of things like come and go all the time. Um, Genesis is a great example, right? Like. Like if you're playing the mirror match, I I I really think you want three Genesis. Mm -hmm. It's like getting hit with a Genesis in the mirror match is just nuts. Whereas like if you're playing against water, like they really don't care about your Genesis. Like it's just never gonna hit them. They have Layla Viking, and if you try to do anything about that, they'll just um, fan for you. A lot of people have gotten away from those types of sacred cows, where they'll still play like the best cards. Like you're not like a, a good example is an Earthwind, right? Uh, like it, at least I'm talking from my own perspective. My own perspective is that I don't have any sacred cows. I used to. Uh, I want to build the deck around Fasoy. I want to build the deck around Noxus. Uh, Noxus, sorry. But if if you look at my um, Earth Wind deck, I didn't play Simi or Star Civil. <laughs> that's a, that's those, what I was curious if you were going to say. Actually, those are very obviously two of the best backups in the game, and I don't have any doubt about that. I have no sort of uh, delusion that those backups aren't good. I think they're amazing, and they just weren't the best backups for my deck because I didn't want Star Civil, for example, because I didn't want backups that broke because I wanted my Yuri's to always be good for activating yeah. um, and didn't want to... Minor even already felt like the liability in Minor is insane. Um, but, you know, even then, like if people... Some people are running two Miners. It's probably the best Earth backup, and I can't fault you for running two if it's the right number to run. And you'll see that people are coming around to understanding, like, we don't always have to play three of a card. We don't always have to include a card. Um, you're you're finding Earth Wind lists without Cecil. Like Ice Ice Earth is a good example of a deck that you know, if any card wants Cecil, it's Ice Earth. It, <laughs> I, Ice tends to take a lot of damage early, right? It tends to be able to dole a lot of shit. Then like Cecil th loves those two things, right? <laughs> so. I, but yet you don't see Cecil, uh, you, even Walls. Walls are coming out of some of the Earth decks. They're coming down to two. Wall was just voted, you know, what we voted it number one forward in the game. You know, the, uh, here's a good sacred cow. Don't play less than three Aluas in your lightning deck. <laughs> I'm not saying that out of hate. I freaking hate the card. But you're just an idiot if you play less than three Aluas. <laughs> I don't even think that's a hot take. I think that's just completely fair. <laughs> that's, oh yeah it's, it's, i actually i don't think there's a single other card that you could debate yuna uh two drop yuna is less contested in my opinion than a lua in the lightning deck i hate the five drop and i've, I've been on record saying that and I, and i said the same thing when i played against andy like in in the petite cup i was like oh god i'm gonna i i because I, I was so on alejandro the night before i tell him don't play don't play and and he was like, no, it's good, it's good. Like, no, you guys do not play that tomorrow. Please don't play it tomorrow. And like the third time that a Hecaton Andy's Yuna, he's just like, oh my God. <laughs> you know? <laughs> he's like Valfour, I'd be like, Hecaton, like every time I would just wait, you know? And um I I think that 
Alua is the only sacred cow I would have if I were to play lightning. Even I would play three Alua. Yeah, that's like and I, I have. Played... I have been playing lightning in locals. Yeah, because I I played a really? Bond's cool little like typo backup engine fire lightning deck. It was very fun, very interesting. Uh, and Illua hundred percent was an insane card all day. Like, yeah. I, what if you had what if you had Meath, man? You could always have it. In that I way. was thinking about that after you mentioned Meath with Illua <laughs> actually <laughs> making a change. Uh, that deck, that deck was sweet, but definitely Illua. I wonder if that deck would be a. I, it would be a lot worse without Illua. Like, I wonder if Illua just makes Lightning Brews better just because you have access to this insane bonkers card. I was playing the Water Lightning deck, uh, a, like a, a Water Lightning deck with Aegis that I was trying to get Oki to play for the Petite Cup, but he didn't <laughs> he didn't bring enough of the cards with him. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I I think the deck is nuts. But part of the... You do with Agrius, right? The Legend? With Agrius, yeah. Yep. But part of the reason it's nuts is because you just play Layla, Viking, Illua, Special, kill your opponent. Like all the time that happens, yeah. Or cloud of darkness, a Lua special kill your opponent. Yeah. Those things happen way more often than than you think they would. Steiner, a Lua special, on top of my guys, Dola, make him huge again. Like, oh, the legend just, Steiner, where you dull your water. Legend, to, yeah. yeah. Yep, it's pretty sweet. Yeah, I yeah, I think that that is a, a, a Lua is a Lua would be my secret cow if I liked the card. Uh, <laughs> Well, because you you've gone on, I, I'm pretty sure you could probably trace back records. You've lost to that card more in clutch situations than any other card. I mean, on stream and off stream, yeah. Yeah, I mean, on yeah. Rec- like you've gone on record saying that everyone's observed. I've it. gone on, I've gone on record saying that before people even knew how much I hated the card, and <laughs> since then I've lost like 40 matches to that card. Yeah. Yeah, I'd have yeah. to say, like my main sacred cow, I guess, would be Minwoo. Oh yeah, that's fair. Oh yeah, I'm a big and, Minwoo Minwoo water decks, yeah. Even in Windwater, I still like, like at Nationals, I was trying to fit three in. I remember that. <laughs> cranking it down to two. Yeah, I just love that card. Um, but, but yeah, and then uh, actually, since we're talking about Nationals a little bit there, speaking of California, you guys are going out to the Fan Fest this weekend, right? Yes. So how are you guys? How excited are you guys? I mean, what's the game plan? <laughs> Zach, I'll start with you. So. <laughs> We're doing the old Sam Prime special of switching deck lists uh, pretty late into it again, probably. <laughs> Instead of, you know, because you have to email in deck lists and then you have a certain amount of time where you can kind of make tweaks or whatever. And I said to wait for the mic w- real quick, but I came back and I'm assuming you're talking about fanfare deck lists. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not yeah, sure. don't, submit, don't submit mine yet. I might change it again. Yeah, so he might change it again. <laughs> uh, this is this is what happens. And hey, at least our, our partner, our, our third teammate there, he, he's also making some changes. So it's not just us. <laughs> but, yeah so no yeah. i'm excited though but like i'm willing to change completely like the deck i'm i'm between three different decks right now i'm either going to play all ex burst um moogles or mono fire or like my three leading ones i could play the bonds deck um that zach played i could be convinced to play it with some changes um or if zach ends up bitching out and wanting to play one of those decks i'll play ice earth <laughs> Yes. All right. Well, there you go. Right now, I'm on Ice Earth, but uh, <laughs> but because Sephiroth is a busted card, but Sam has much more success with it. I I think just my play style with it has been too conservative, and I've tried to ramp my backups too fast when I could just maybe try to blow up my opponent and risk maybe getting blown up myself. And you know, I I, I don't know. My record's a lot worse than Sam, so something's different, <laughs> even with like one or two cards off, which I shouldn't make that much of a difference but no it'd be a super fun event um it's one of those kind of things like the reunion event nationals where it's it's a lot more social as well uh because there's and this time at least there's not like when you went to nationals it was super social but there were still nationals on the line right so there's always that kind of stress in the background and that pressure whereas fan fest it's i mean i want to (laughs) win but it's definitely going to be a really awesome community thing. The Sunday event, whether we go to a shop or we have an event at the hotel or whatever, should be awesome as well. Uh, I'm excited for my girlfriend to experience it with me too because she never traveled uh, with me to a card-based event before, so that'll be a new experience for her as well. Yeah, yeah, it seems like it's going to be fun. <laughs> when do you guys fly? When do you guys fly? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. I think that about wraps it up for this episode. Yep, got through everything. Yeah, I think that's everything. Uh, awesome. So once, once again, we want to give one last shout-out to uh, our sponsor, Cards of Ivalice. Uh Go check them out for all your singles needs. Thank you for everything you guys do, for sure. But yeah, uh, 
We've been the Choker Bros. I'm Cody Snodgrass. I'm Zach Brown. And I'm Sam Riley. And we'll see you next time.